Hi there, thanks for joining me again today. Um, we're today going to be talking about the maths behind lines of best fit. So in the previous example, we had some data and we fit a line or we, we fitted a linear line by eye. But we spoke about how we need to have some sort of objective way to fit a straight line to data. So let's say I have a sample, or it can actually be a population, it doesn't matter for these purposes, of a set of individuals or a set of countries, a set of products. And for each of these individuals, I have a data on their X and their Y. So it could be wages and education, it could be anything. And we are trying to think about an objective way to fit a line, a straight line to this data set. So one thing we could do is we could say, well, let, let's fit a line such that we minimize the sum of distances of each point to the line. Well, you could ask, well, which distance are we talking about? Are we talking about the vertical distance or are we talking about the horizontal distance? Well, in this context, we are actually using our xi to predict yi. So actually what we care about is error in prediction in the y direction. So we're actually trying to minimize this distance. So perhaps what we might do is we might minimize a sum which looks something like the sum across all points in our data set of the true value of y minus the fitted value of y. So I'm going to call the fitted value of y y hat. And that's the fitted value which we get for the particular parameters for our line of best fit, which is alpha hat plus beta hat times xi. Yeah, so alpha hat here is the intercept of our line of best fit and beta represents the gradient. And, and actually, sorry, what I actually should be putting in here is we should have modular signs because what we, we care just as much about under predicting, so this sort of point relative to the line, as we do about a point that would be equally as far away but below the line. We care just as much about a point which is below our line as a point which is above our line. And we don't want in our sum these two things to cancel one another out because one is negative and one is positive. So that's why I've used the modulus sign. Well, that's one way we could fit our line of best fit. But the problem with the modulus function is that it's a particularly sort of nasty nonlinear function, especially when you're thinking about differentiating it, which is what we're going to do in a few minutes. And it's not really something which we like to deal with. So perhaps I minimize a sum S primed which instead of using the modular sign to deal with our underpredicted results or overpredicted results rather, I could say, well, let's minimize this, the difference between each point and the line squared. So by squaring that, I've made the points which lie, lie below the line, I've made that distance positive. So I care just as much about overpredicting as I do about underpredicting. But in minimizing the sum of the squares, this actually does something else. And by squaring it, it says that I don't care as much about small deviations from the line as I do about big deviations from the line. Because there isn't an equal weighting which is applied to each observation. The weighting which I apply to this observation from our originally, original line, because I'm squaring that, that takes precedent over some of the smaller distances. So Perhaps in changing our sort of cost function, which we're minimizing to S primed, that would move the line closer towards this anomalous point. Yeah. And you could talk about, well, OK, so that's fine. We're minimizing the sum of the squares, but there's no reason why we can't actually generalize this to higher degrees. So perhaps we could choose to minimize the um, distance between the points and the line to the power four, because again, when you raise any number to the power four, whether it's positive or negative, it becomes a positive number. So perhaps in doing that, that would again say, well, we care even more about these sort of big deviations of, of lines from the point. So perhaps that would actually make our line even sort of slope downwards. 
So there are many different ways to fit a straight line to data. And we spoke about the problems of it using the modulus function. And actually, most of the time, what we, we tend to use as our default is minimizing the sum of the squares. And we're going to talk about how we do that in the next video. I'll see you then.